What's Swingin' Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Steel Mace Nation podcast. I am Fred Moore. I'm glad that you're here to check out this recent episode. It's with a woman named Karina out of Southern Arizona who is on Instagram as at soaz.taijigungfu. Uh, check the show notes on how that's all spelt. And um, Karina practices Tai Chi, and she started using the steel mace. And you could see that her movements with the steel mace are tied in and wrapped up tightly with the Tai Chi movements that she practices. You guys who are steel mace coaches out there would uh, get a lot out of this podcast because we talked about her movements. We also talked about her mindset where power comes from, you know, uh, she'll get into that. She gets into, you know, just understanding the martial arts aspect of what Steel Mace is sort of uh, nibbling around. Um, so she also has a studio called Raven Studios where she makes wooden swords. And um, she's at www.little hyphen raven.com so in a moment we will get to that podcast and before we do i just want to let you know that addicts mason clubs are a sponsor of this podcast if you guys follow me on instagram you see i'm using the addicts a lot and uh, i'm really really excited to have addicts as a sponsor because um i basically love using that friggin adjustable mace system and it's come in very handy as i'm starting to develop a program for firefighters i think the addicts plays well with firefighter training and as the months go by i'm going to be rolling out programs for firefighters and i'm going to be getting into firehouses volunteer and career to just show people how to use a mace uh, I'm also going to be showing mace flow and things, but more for just assessing uh, movement patterns and things like that and helping them with moving better for the job. So Addix Mace, you're number one in my book. And if everybody wants to grab an Addix, you can use the discount code SMN19. Um, and Don over at Addix will send you whatever it is that you order. That discount code applies to everything across the board. And within that wheelhouse is MaceFit. MaceFit uses the Addex Mace and Clubs and everything that they do. It's a, another outfit out of Florida, Frank, of uh, the, the Cave Gym in Sarasota, Florida, created the MaceFit program. The MaceFit program is essentially programming, right? So you could go on there and on the website and you could grab a uh, like a mace fit workout you could also get certified to become a mace fit coach and there's a lot of cool things that are connected to becoming mace fit coach uh, which you could go over with frank when you're uh, contacting him and also want to give a shout out to ongo energy spray ongo has been there since the beginning as a sponsor um I was lucky enough to actually be on one of the Ongo commercials, and it was really fun because they asked me, hey, go out in the parking lot with the spray and, and say stuff. And I felt a little on the spot, and, and I was just being, like, ridiculous. And it turned out whatever I said they liked. So you never know, people. You know, hook up with some good people, work with them, and just be yourself. That's that's a, a great thing. And, um, you know, with, with Ongo – it's been a lot of fun, and it's just a good product, a supplement that you could get caffeine boost from without drinking a cup of coffee, without drinking a pre-workout. Uh, ditch the energy drinks, ditch the bloat, um, think, ditch the, the stinky coffee breath. You know, before you go in to train people, right? If you're a coach, right, you don't want coffee on your breath. So three sprays in your mouth, 75 milligrams of caffeine, which is more than enough. And it works very quickly. Uh, and and another thing, too, is uh, it's handy to have in your vehicle if you're somebody who drives a lot. 
for myself as a firefighter, I come off shift exhausted a lot. And it's right there. So there's been times where I'm driving down the highway and I got a decent ride home and I start nodding off at the wheel. And I don't care what anybody says. I don't feel like pulling over and sleeping in a parking lot. Uh, You know, I want to just get home. So I'll take three squirts and it starts working in about three minutes and it wakes me up. Um, And I've, I've used it quite a few times for that. So, and then last but not least, I want to just send a special shout out to the Vintage Strength Games. You're awesome. Um, Having a good time working with everybody at the Vintage Strength Games and all the great podcasts that came out of it. Everybody's got to jump on the Vintage Strength Games train, try to get out to a, a competition and do your best with the swings and just have fun. And uh, last thing I want to say is I'm teaching uh, steel mace class over at Platform Training in Ocean, New Jersey. Uh, Platform Training is all about unconventional training. When I walked in there, the owner, Ryan, had Bulgarian bags, kettlebells, and he had a couple of maces in the back. He he knew how to swing, you know, some 360s and things like that. Um, He liked... The, uh, the flow portion of the steel mace. So he asked me to come in and teach some classes. So I'm over there. If you guys want to jump in on a class, DM me at steelmacenation.com. Let me know you're coming so I can make sure I got a mace for you. Let's get to the podcast, everybody. Enjoy. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast, Karina. I really appreciate this. It's um, I've been watching you on Instagram um, on uh, at soas.com. Taiji Gung Fu, right? That's your Instagram. Yeah. Um, you have yeah. really cool stuff going on here with the mace, and I've been watching you, and it's just been getting incredibly better. Thank you for coming on and telling me about it. I, I, I really am looking forward to this conversation. Well, you're welcome. I really appreciate the opportunity. So, yeah, like I said, you know, you're you're basically using the steel mace the way you best know how tying in your martial arts you know you, what you do and this is what's right. so interesting about the steel mace you, you could see it in everybody that uses a steel mace if yeah. they whatever it is they were doing before they're incorporating that in they're finding a way to fuse something from the whatever modality they were doing fuse it with the mace so you're fusing in like like gung fu and tai chi right. uh with your with your style your mace style and yeah. lately some of your movements have been incredible and and right off the bat let's just tell everybody you're you know you've been doing martial arts for a long time you're operating from your hips every movement that you do and it's it's not <laughs> easy it's not easy because i tried to copy some of the stuff and it's just it's fantastic so how did this all come about? How did you come up with uh, using the steel mace? And then after that, let's back it up to the beginning and how you got into fitness at all. Sure. Um, well, the steel mace, uh, I, I have a friend in Phoenix, uh, Tony Lamana. He's uh, at weightlifting doc. Yeah. And uh, I, I was new to Instagram. I'm very new to Instagram just this past year, 2019. And uh, I started watching him and he was posting all this May stuff and I had never seen it before. And uh, it just struck me. Um, it looked really cool for one thing. Yeah. And um, I have had some neck and upper back and shoulder issues for years and years. And I've all, I'm always looking for ways to, uh, to improve that and to work on that. And I saw the May, him using the mace and I thought, oh, that's perfect works the upper back and the neck and the shoulders and everything that I really need. Right. So that was my first, my first aha moment with the mace. And then um, once I started using it, I realized, Oh, there's a lot more, <laughs> there's a lot more to this than, than just the physical uh, rehab use of it. Right. So I started looking at it more along the lines of, incorporating it with my martial arts training and and that just it just all tied together so perfectly so quickly yeah um, just almost automatically now is that because it you look at it as a martial art do you feel steel mace is more like steel mace flow let's let's put it that way do you sure. feel the steel mace flow is more at, of a martial well 
I don't look at them. I get, it's to me, it's a supplement to my martial arts because it gives me another way of um, for my movement. It gives me another. It gives you feedback. What I'm trying to say, yeah. when you use when you use tools uh, like in martial arts, we use weapons um, and things like that. So when you use those tools, it gives you feedback for your motion. It's kind of hard to explain, but when you're moving by yourself with no, not holding anything and you're just free form, you're moving by yourself. When you have a training partner, you have feedback from your training partner when you're doing partner drills. Right. And you have an implement like the mace or a sword or a pole or a staff, you have feedback from that implement that you're holding, the weight, the leverage, how you move with it and how you extend your body movement into that tool, whether it's a weapon or the mace. You're, it's a part of you. Yeah. Part of you. So um, it was just a, a, a natural extension of that for me. I have, I've used swords before and I've used different uh, Wing Chun, we have uh, staff that we use and um, and other tools like that. So the mace really lent itself perfectly to what I was already doing, although it's different because it's it's heavy at the end. Most you know swords are not heavy that way; they're they're light, and um, so the movement is different, but it's still the same development for your body getting that feedback nice i i think you did explain that pretty well because that's been a struggle point for me to explain the feedback and how the movement is different with the feedback and i've been trying to look for a way to answer that question to people myself well if, if you if you look at the gata the where it comes from was the gata and that was for wrestling mm -hmm. and so you're doing i think they do the 10 to 2 most primarily right when you're doing that movement and you're pulling over your shoulder, that represents pulling, pulling a person or, or throwing a person. So the, the, it, that's what it, to me, that's what it was designed for originally to right. give you feedback. You're not using, you're not uh, throwing a person. You need different training modalities in a martial art. You have your, you solo work by yourself. You have partner work when you're working with a person, you have weapons and, and other tools to, to work with. And you need all of those because you have to have a training network to, to develop all of these things. Because when you're, if you're talking about martial arts, you're talking about fighting, skills development for that purpose. But you can't fight to develop those skills. You know what I'm saying? Fighting is fighting, training is training. Yeah. They're both totally different things. You can't really fight to train. You have to train to train. <laughs> so, right. Training is never real. It's re you can you try to make it as realistic as you can, but it's never real. So you need all of these different modalities of training to replicate what you will be doing when you're actually applying it in fighting. Right. Does that make does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. You can't practice a martial art where it's a designed system to fight unless you actually at the very least train with a person in fighting where you could see if your stuff is even working and then to take it a step further you get so good at it but you want to see is my training really this good how does it apply when i go into a real fight so then people enter competitions sure then that's a whole nother subject as far as competitions go yeah 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 and you don't have to compete the training itself can give you what you need if you know how to do it correctly um, but you can't, in other words, when you're, when you're doing your solo forms or katas in, in, in Japanese arts or forms in Chinese arts, um, you're working by yourself so you can move full speed, full power. Yeah. You can't do that with your training partner. You have to control yourself True. with your training partner. So there's, there's a fault or a defect in every mode of training, but we have a training network of tools to eliminate those. Okay. To compensate yeah. for the fault. So when you're using a tool like the gata or the steel mace, you can move more quickly and you're not, you, you're not really throwing a person because you'll hurt the person. You don't want to hurt your training partner. Right. Right. If, if you break your partner, you don't get another one. So, yeah. Right. Nobody wants to work so with you. you. So you're, so you're looking for all these different ways of training to develop all the skills because you don't want to 
just go out and fight people to learn how to fight. Them. Yeah. So That's your your use of the I mace think. is actually to supplement your practice of Tai Chi. Tai Chi and Wing Chun. And both. Wing Chun. So uh, yeah. you're finding the benefit is that you're getting a like a biofeedback that gives you a better understanding of of yeah you you have it's 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 hard to explain exactly but you get with with that feedback if you know what you're looking for when you when you get that feedback you know you can feel eventually as you train you can feel if you're if you're straining too much or if your elbows out too far or if you're hands are too far away from you, or if your stance is not right, or your footwork is not right, you use all these different training modalities. And what the, what the mace helps with is, is to feel how you're moving and how you're using your whole body to move the mace. You know, when you, when I first started using the mace, even though I've been doing this for a very long time, as far as martial arts is concerned, when I picked up the mace, it was a new tool. So I had to start from the beginning and I noticed for myself, when you're holding a tool like that, your hands are in contact with it. Your brain goes to your hands. Yeah. You're, so your hands are starting to move the mace. And that's not what you want. You want your whole body to move the mace. Right. Even even for myself, I saw that right away. It's like, oh, I'm just using my hands. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, you know, I'm self-correcting as I go. And and uh, just based on my, my history and teaching myself how to use the mace correctly, as far as I can see, I haven't taken any classes yet. I still need to do that, but I'm just going back from my own experience. Yeah. Now, if you were, it's just, I'm just tickling the idea of you just teaching your own type of steel mace, but you would have to teach everybody Tai Chi first and Wing Chun first. That's the thing. It, it's, I, I believe that I can, if I, if somebody's starting from nothing, they need to learn how to move the mace and they need to learn how to move their body. Um, if I was helping martial artists who already have experience in their art, I think I could apply hmm. mace training to their art and maybe help them with their art using the mace. Yeah. Okay. So it depends on what their starting point is. Well, that's, that's a great thing right there. That's a great thing. I love to see it because it's fascinating, fascinating to see how the mace can get incorporated into all these different things. Um, just recently, I, I uh, there's an episode up that we did with a gentleman named Neil Canner, who's a tennis coach, and he learned that he could introduce steel mace into his training no. courses for tennis. Sure. You know, and when he sure. uh, started talking about that and 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 the types of things he sees with uh, preventing injury, you know, using the mace. I love to hear it. It was because, you know, we want to see the steel mace grow. And it, the fact that you could put it into martial arts or tennis or anything like that is a win. Really, any any type of movement, really. You know, yeah. every um, you look at any good athlete, any really top level athlete, and it's and it's the same thing. They're talking about body unity and how their body, the, all the body mechanics. Yeah. Um, it's in everything. It's really in everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I, why, don't, why don't we go back to the start and tell us a little bit about how you got into martial arts to begin with? Um, you know, uh, I think you mentioned something about getting into weight training when you were like 11. Why don't we go back to that? Uh, I, yeah, I started physical fitness and, and stuff like that has been uh, just I, I don't even remember not ever <laughs> being involved with that. Um, uh, you know, I was influenced by my father at a really young, um, he used to, uh, well, he used to, he still does. He's my father's 85 years old and he still exercises every day. Nice. I grew up watching him every morning, get up and do his calisthenics in the living room floor in his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> you still yeah, remember morning. it. You can't forget yeah. that. <laughs> Push up, sit ups, you know, all the calisthenics that he did and he used to run. And that was my motivation. It's just I saw that every day. So parents out there, yeah, that's it. Just seeing it. The kids he, are watching. He yeah. wasn't. He wasn't preaching it to you, but you just oh, saw. Oh no, it. not at all. Okay, not good. At all. Not preaching right. it at all. He he supported both my parents. Supported me in all of my athletic endeavors. Yeah. Um, but just just I, I don't know if it was just 
I don't know what it was, but that that just sparked an interest in me uh, from the from day one uh, for movement. And so um, I grew up playing all kinds of sports, uh, played everything. Um, I do remember it. Is I my first weight bench and barbell and dumbbell set I got. Uh, I was probably 11, 12 years old, something like that. And I was just uh, I wanted to be strong and fit and and athletic, and that's just the way I, I always was. Yeah. Um, all through grade school, high school, I played sports, um, a little bit of soccer in college, and then when I was in my 20s, I would say mid 20s. Um, I started Tai Chi when I was in college and, um, I did that for four years and, uh, then I switched to Wing Chun and, um, been doing it ever since. Uh, so, so that's, that's it for, for Tai Chi or. No, I, I practiced both. Um, I practiced Tai Chi for. For four years before I started Wing Chun. Okay. And um, uh, my teacher in Tai Chi had moved away, and so I was looking for something else. And I saw my Wing Chun teacher um, at a demonstration. And I, again, go back to movement. I didn't know what he was doing. I didn't know what Wing Chun was. I never heard of it before. I just saw him move. And I, when I saw him move, I thought, oh, I want to learn how to do whatever it is you're doing. Because what? was what was it that he did that was so uh the, magnetic the, the way he controlled his body um that's the only way i can describe it it wasn't that it was uh it was a martial arts demo so he had a training partner that he was working with um i can't even i can't even tell you exactly what it was it was the way he controlled his body and i wanted to be able to control myself and move that way yeah um, and that was, and uh, I saw him in the early nineties. I started with him in 93 and I've been with him ever since. And, and, uh, like I said, it wasn't a specific style I was looking for. I, I look at, I watch how people move. Yeah. And I really, um, I've done that my whole life. I love watching the Olympics. I love watching, you know, sports. I love watching how people move. And when I saw him move, I just, I just knew I wanted to learn from him. Yeah. He taught in the in the town that I lived in, which was Tucson at that time, and um, that was it. That was it. I've been with him for twenty seven years. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, you know, I I watch. Um, I've always been interested in Tai Chi. It's very funny. I uh, I never got into it. Maybe I just didn't have anybody in my life close enough to kind of help me into it. But I remember being in Central Park when I was a kid, and there was a group of individuals practicing tai chi and they were moving super slow very slow right. yeah. and i just sat there watching them and i was like mesmerized by it and i remember yeah. somebody coming up behind and making like a you know an off remark about it like right like waste of time something it was something like that and i remember looking at that person and i really like i i kind of like was angry at them because I what I was witnessing was everybody moving in unison doing this Tai Chi. And I knew that even though <laughs> they weren't breaking boards and flipping people, that those people were strong and they yes. symbolized strength and they, they just had it in them. And then every once yeah. in a while I would I would see it. And, and I was just always interested in it and, and something it's so like it looks like subtle movement. And then when I came across your Instagram and you have these like slow movements and then a little bit of a hip move and a little bit of a, a hand comes out and you realize that little hip move was drawing power from the earth up through your body, extending out your hand in a one inch move that technically, if you do it on somebody, you could probably hurt them really bad. <laughs> you know, it's right, like, yeah, this, I know this that's, slow, yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. The, the, the Tai Chi is, is, um, subtle that way yeah what you first see is that very slow movement and sometimes that's all that people practice but there is more to tai chi chuan than than just that slow movement that's the very beginning stages and because tai chi is a martial art and, yeah. and a lot of people don't even realize that um it, it is designed for self-defense so so um the slow movement 
is very important in developing all of the skills required, all your structure, positioning, distance, timing, power generation, body unity, uh, neutralizing other people's force, all of those principles that you're trying to learn, um, you're, you're developing your movement very slowly at first. So you can feel how everything is, is functioning and working together. And then wow. you incorporate that into much faster movement. But the slow movement you learn first in, in Tai Chi. So it's like driving a car. You start off driving very slow, learn the mechanics. Yes. And then yes. as you get better, you can start adding speed. Yes, exactly. Okay. Think about anything, a musical instrument. You learn how to play the guitar or right. the piano or whatever. You don't start out full speed. You start out slowly and you build up speed over time. Okay. That's interesting. But now- you have to. What about other martial arts where they don't do that? Um, why, like, you know, I, well, I'm assuming they don't do that, but I know everything has to start at a slower point, but Tai Chi is very slow. Very slow. It's yeah, almost it's like, like you're moving statues, right? You're moving. Right, yeah. And then, like, if you go to, <laughs> yeah. you know, go past the like, karate school, you know, and you see a beginner class, they're just huh, huh, throwing punches. Should, should they be going slower or – it does that's I something believe, different. I believe they do go slower at first, but not as slow as Tai Chi slow. Okay. Uh, uh, but it's just a different method of development, and there's no right or wrong okay. or good or bad. It's just a different method. Yeah, whatever you're drawn to. Yeah, even right. in Wing Chun, when we do our first form, it's done more slowly, and then everything else is done more quickly. Um, but, uh, you know, different schools have different trains of thought as far as how they develop. Yeah. Um, some, with, some schools like Cali, um, the Filipino martial arts, they start with weapons. You start with weapons in your hands, and then you learn how to fight without the weapons. Wow. Uh, and, we, and, we start without the weapons. Right. And then with the weapons. So there's no right or wrong. It just depends on the, on the, the intent and the goal of the, of the system. That's interesting. And w Wing Chun is um, a form of Gung Fu. Yes. Yeah. Tai Chi is also, they're both, the Kung Fu is just, or Kung Fu or Kung Fu is uh, basically just means Chinese martial arts. <laughs> okay. But now Wing Chun is more about uh, grappling. Is that what it is? Wing Chun is, is, you know, you know, it's, they, all the systems pretty much contain everything, but what you see in Wing Chun is more striking um, at first. And, and, and there, I, there again, it's, that's what you look at first. You have to start with something. So we start with striking. We're standing up, we're striking, punching, kicking, uh, hand techniques. Um, but there are sweeps and takedowns and joint locks and all that sort of thing too. But yeah. you learn st more striking techniques first. Okay. Everything has to start somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Tai Chi is is uh, similar in that way. You're it's there are there are kicks and punches and and sweeps and joint locks and um, it's you know fighting is brutal, but you 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 every art has their their system of, of developing all those skills. Yes, and since you've been practicing for as long as you have been. I take it you're at a point now where a lot of your training is very repetitive second nature style. Um, I know you're always exploring new things and pushing the boundaries. Mm -hmm. So as far as like uh, where your mind goes when you're doing something that you're very familiar with in these styles, are you finding yourself in the zone as they say, the zone? Are you in, are you there where you're so <laughs> focused and you could get in it, you could get into it like within a minute or two or, um, does it... Yeah, you know when I, when I'm it depends on what I'm doing when I'm training. Whether if I'm if I'm by myself and I'm doing my forms or I'm working by myself or if I'm working with a training partner, um, we have so many different drills that we do. But we're my husband and I teach now, and we're we're always exploring different ways of of teaching people and different drills to do. And um, for myself, it really depends on what I'm doing as far as getting in the zone but yeah i just i feel like i'm in it all the time <laughs> all the time right because i mean that practice looks like it, it it you you become so accustomed to it that you you could almost get into it and out of it easily i would say so yeah, yeah. so that's a great point for practicing it because i think what we're talking about is being 
in the moment and focused with intention and mindset, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. You you when I'm training, I'm not thinking of anything else. Right. It's it's I'm I'm just focusing on what I'm doing and it's it's I'm just so used to that. I just I it's it's my it's my sanctuary when I you know, when I'm training, that's it. That's, yeah. That's and, it. and go ahead. When you um do you ever find that sometimes you're distracted and then you're like, okay, something's wrong here. Does that ever happen? Is that like a way to tell if maybe something's off balance in your life, if you're feeling distracted from your training and you can't get into that zone? Um, it's so rare for me. Okay. <laughs> uh, you're so I, good I, now. I don't, <laughs> I, when I, when I'm, yeah, I'm just so focused when I'm training, even when things are, not going well. I mean, I, I know what you're talking about. There can be some distractions there yeah. and some things that you're thinking about. But, but when I'm training, I'm so focused on what I'm doing and what I'm trying to accomplish that that training session. Um, yeah, if there was something really, really bad going on, that would have to be it would have to be something substantial yeah. to distract me from what I'm what I'm doing when I'm training. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, like sometimes a, a person's on their way to the gym, they have like a big day, you know, they want really want to put in 100% effort into their training, whatever it is that they're doing. And they mistakenly look at their phone and there's a text message that just isn't good. Maybe it's a complaint or there's somebody's got a problem. Yeah. Hey, you're going to have to call me. We got to iron this out. Now you, you go into the gym and your whole workout is thrown off because this one little thing, and it's really not like you just said, it's not that big of a deal. It's not like a disaster is happening, but this person can't encapsulate that, push it to the side and say, okay, that's that. Let me focus on the training. So I ask yeah. all about all this uh, because you have so much time in the trenches doing this. Like, Is there a, a way that people who are just learning how to be more focused and mindful, is there a way we could – deal with little interruptions like that is there a special way to set our mind straight so we can focus on the task at hand uh, i don't have any i don't have any like trick or anything yeah. that you can do it you know it really is just experience um and and putting that time in um and yeah there's there if something you know something sometimes things do need your attention right right <laughs> Other than you know, to, 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 it takes you away from your training, and you do need to to address that. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't have any um, I don't have any trick to it. Other other than if you when you really find when you really find a, a, a type of training, whatever it is, or a type of anything, it could be a musical instrument, it can be a dance, it could be a, a just working out. Um, when you really find something you you're passionate about, that's what does it. Okay. Because you're so you're so passionate about doing what it is that you're that you that makes you feel so good to do. Yeah. Um, that's what does it. You know what I mean? It's not like I, I it's not like I do some kind of meditation and then I'm good. You know what I mean? I just, I, I don't, I, I, I don't operate that way. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know what I mean? You know what yeah. I mean? Um, I, I was grasping at straws when I asked that. I, I, yeah, it's like, <laughs> you know, I grew up in the in the '70s watching all the kung fu movies and everything, and they yeah, all had same. a trick. They all had a trick. They would they would do a yeah. thing, and then they would focus. And and I I think I, <laughs> I think yeah, I was like yeah. looking for a shortcut, but. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't have the, the white eyebrows. And the, <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I don't have those tricks like that. And, yeah. and movies are really good for that. They, they, they oh yeah, it. definitely. Definitely. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, you know, growing up on that stuff, I, I like sure. ate it by the handful. I live, like I would watch the Kung Fu movie. Then I'd go outside, yeah. find a broomstick and that's my bow right. staff. And then I'd go find yeah. my friend and we'd go smack broomsticks until somebody got hit in the head and went home crying and you know it was <laughs> i was practicing kung fu i was that was well, it <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah 
but yeah, as you know, so as as we uh, develop our practice and whatever as we do for fitness, it's yeah, like you said earlier, that's your sanctuary. So if you're in your sanctuary, why should little things bother you, right? Yeah, that's that's what I'm. Yeah, I guess what I'm getting at when right. if you find that if you can find that for yourself, and it's different for everybody. You know, it's really different for everybody. It might be sewing. It might be whatever it is. Right. It's, you know, for everybody. Okay. Yeah. So find something that you passionate about that you love yeah that's your center that's where you find your center again yeah. yeah and then you can go to that place when things aren't so great and and you have that yeah for me it's always been movement it's always been movement oriented um that's just been you know my entire life has been revolved around movement of some kind yeah yeah that's the same with me and um I guess that's why I became a, a, a fireman, you know, because I knew I didn't have to be behind a desk. It's um, very physical. Yeah, yeah. I just I need I knew well when things get tough, it would be something where I'm moving. I, I'm moving. I'm yeah. putting ladders up. I'm moving. That's where I felt yeah. comfortable. Even though it's uncomfortable, it's comfortable. Whereas being behind a sure. desk with a boss, you better have this paperwork done by the end of, end of the day. I'd be like, I quit. Yeah, <laughs> I deadlines. That's too and much all pressure that. for yeah. me. Yeah, movement is where yeah. it's at. So same here. Um, your mace that you use uh, looks interesting. Where where does it come from? Um, I have a few. Um, I I first purchased. You know, I didn't know anything about the mace, and I didn't know what you know, what I wanted to you know how much weight or anything. So I knew I wanted to start out light. So I first purchased purchased a couple of five pound maces. I uh, cat barbell, cat right. brand. Um, and then I also purchased a 15 pound mace through, through them. <clears throat> and, um, I'm, I'm very lucky that my, my husband is a metal worker and he's, he knows how to weld. And so he made me the one, the one that you see me working with, it has a silver handle. Yeah. Actually, two of them now have a silver handle, but the, the first one is a nine pound mace that he made for me. Um, so that's, I use that one a lot for certain things. Um, when I, it's too heavy for me to really flow with though. Right. I know people say, start out with a 10 pound mace. Well, I'm, I'm five, three and my hands are really small. And uh, when I, well, I go uh, back up a minute. When I, when I first started doing, using the mace and with the five and the nine pound, when I would do something like an arrow or the, the archer type move, um, I'm strong enough to do it but my elbows could not handle that. And I have, we'll talk about this later, but I, I work with my hands. And so I, I have a lot of um, strain, of, of fatigue and strain on my forearms and my wrists and my elbows and my shoulders. So I'm, I'm fairly strong, but my joints are overworked and yeah. overused <laughs> from right. my life. And so I, uh, so with the five pound mace, I can do a lot of the flow movements where I could not do them with the nine pound mace. Right. That's changed now. My joints are feeling better. Um, but my nine pound mace, going back to that, it was uh, my husband made me that one. Yeah. It, is it and a longer handle than the normal mace? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it's like 40 inches, maybe, or at least it's more than that, even. Wow. High 40s. Yeah. It's a longer mace. It's the same length as my 15 pound mace. Okay. Uh, that I, and that I the handle, uh, the diameter of the handle looks smaller than a typical. Yes. Yeah. That is another subject. Um, for me, um, I need a, I need a hand, a, a grip that is an inch, inch to an inch and a quarter, um, anything bigger than that. And it, again, it's too much strain on my, on my tendons to be gripping something that is, uh, an inch and a half diameter. Wow. Huge difference. Um, just recently I had posted, I, I, my husband re, uh, redid the handle on my 15 pound mace. We cut the head off and uh, put a thinner handle on it and a one inch diameter handle on it. And I just started doing one arm three sixties with my 15 pound mace. Nice. Which could not do there's no way I could do that with that one and a half inch handle if right. I could my grip um, and everybody's talking about grip strength um, 
I'm a woodworker and I work with hand tools all day long and I have been for many, many years. And if gripping something big like that is, is, is uh, you know, good for your grip strength, I would be able to crush bricks by now because I've been doing it for so long. Yeah. And it just doesn't work that way. You, you, you over, if you over fatigue those, those ligaments, you, you go in the other direction. Yeah. They get weaker. And just by the nature of my work, um, I've, I've, I'm, I'm still okay. I haven't done so much damage that I can't do anything. But um, if the one inch handle, if you're gripping something and, it, and, and there's a gap between your fingers and your, and your palm, it's, it's, if the gap is too big, it's too much of a strain. Yeah. Um, I don't, I, you know, in my opinion, I don't care who you are, it, that, 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 um, the strain, I don't know why they make the heavier maces with the fatter handles. You know, when you're lifting weights in a barbell, if your barbell is your barbell, you don't keep increasing the, the, the diameter of your barbell because you put more weight on it. <laughs> right. So, so I'm, I'm re really, I'm a little bit confused as to why they make them that way. Well, I, you know, there was a, another podcast where we were kind of talking about this actually. And, um, it was the in, in the early days of dumbbells, they were fatter handles, but then over time they got smaller because it was yeah. a way to save money. Uh -huh. I guess I don't know, uh -huh. but you still had to put the weight into the into the ends. But right. then then your grip changes. Where um, my experience with doing dumbbell curls was, uh, I would get ten I would get tendonitis from gripping too hard. And okay, I, yeah. so when it's heavy, when it's real heavy, yeah. instead of focusing on making the bicep work, I would, well, to make the bicep work, I'm squeezing it all with all my might and I'm yeah. really crushing with my hand and that's causing elbow tendonitis. Sure, so they yes, make these yes. things called fat grips, which are these rubber grips with a slit that you could slide over the handle. This is not uh -huh. an endorsement by the way, but they are good. If you have, <laughs> if you have the elbow tendonitis, you put that around the handle. So now your grip opens up. And it forces you to lower the weight, first of all. You can't right, go as heavy. Go. And yeah. and then you could curl better. But I don't think those details actually apply when it comes to a mace. I don't think if you go with a smaller handle um, or a fatter handle, you're 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 gonna be able to change the weight based upon that. It's but but there are obviously your fatter handles and, and they do yeah. challenge your grip this way. And then there's maces where they have a smaller handle similar to the diameter you're using uh there's yes. addx addx the has, addx yes i yeah. love their addicts. but i'll tell you the 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 what i find so thrilling about using the addx is when you're going for timed events like a five minute swing mm -hmm. every time you miss a swing and you don't have proper form it wiggles in your hand more oh it's okay. It, it, there's a little, and it, you can feel it. It's jamming you up, and it's like, like yeah. I always say, it, it requires good form throughout. Otherwise, every time you mess up, it takes a little nick out of you. And yeah, and I find yeah. when I go from that back to a fat handle mace, especially when it's the weight starts going up, I my hand grip relaxes a little bit. Oh, okay, that's interesting because yeah. mine relaxes with the smaller grip. I end up. I end up crushing it with a bigger grip because I'm trying to hold on to it. Wow. See, this is interesting. And this is interesting enough that you know you could spend a whole podcast talking about it. Right. Steel Mace coaches need to know this stuff out there. So if there was a local class in your neighborhood and you weren't um, a practitioner of any martial arts or anything, you just wanted to take a class, you might get turned off after the first class because you'll be like, the handle's too big. I can't use it. And then you'll be deterred yeah. and go away. So coaches got to be cognizant. Anybody new coming in, look at their size, look at their hands, exactly. ask them how it feels in their hands, and exactly. then have have an alternative mace with a smaller handle. Yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because it's it's so individual. It's yeah. so individual. You know, and it depends on what, what, uh, what your size and also what you do for a living. If you don't, if you're, if you have fatigue in your arms, um, it, it's so individual, that hand grip. Um, you have, I'll just tell you one thing for swords, when you're holding a sword, the grip is smaller because you have more control over the sword with a smaller, with a smaller grip. Um, if you're, 
you're holding you're, the sword with with up here, right? In your hand, like the top portion with these fingers. Yeah, you're using all of your fingers. It depends on it depends on the sword, depends on the type like of the sword. Like the grip. Yes. That's right. where and then down here it kind of it allows for wiggle it's or flexible. Fl yeah. There's some flexibility. Right. Yeah. And I think with what the mace, it's the other way around. When you're doing 360s, you kind of want the grip down on your bottom three fingers. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd have to. I'd You'd have to swing it to find out. Check that yeah, out next yeah. time. Yeah, what, what I'm doing, what am I doing? Yeah. Uh, and, and because the mace is so much newer to me than, than, other, than other implements. Yeah. Uh, but just, just as far as your control of the, the control of the tool, like for a for a, a staff or a pole, um, if you're hitting something with it, or if you're hit using doing partner drills, if they hit your sword or your staff, and the grip is not controllable, it'll fly out of your hand. Yeah. So you don't want to drop your you don't want to drop your sword or drop your weapon. Um, so generally, those types of weapons, the handle is a little, is on the smaller side. But, um, uh, that's very interesting right there, what you just said, though, about your grip going up against somebody else and losing the weapon. When you practice yeah. with weapons, your grip has to be sure, because if the other person has yes. has even an inclination, your grip is off. They're going to take advantage of that and whack it out of your hands. Yes, if it'll, it can slip. Uh, it can slip. Your sword can slip sideways or out of control or yeah. you can actually literally, literally drop it. Right. So the so the so the handle has to be such that you have complete control of it in your hand. Right. Um, and and like I said, for me, the bigger grips, uh, I don't have that control, and I end up having to death grip it in order to hold on to it. Where yeah, with, with a slightly smaller and I'm not too small. There's a limitation. If I go too small, that's not good either. But for me, the one inch, the one and one and a quarter, I can control it better, and I can loosen my grip and not have to grip so tightly. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a dichotomy. Uh, to, yeah. Like, if you go too what too much in one direction, you're gonna get yes. bad results. Too much in the other direction, too you're gonna much get bad in results. the other. You can't have it too big or too small. There's yeah. a range. What what I call in martial arts is a range of correctness, and that's every in everything that we do. There's a range. There's not like one spot that's perfect and it's right. There's yeah. a range of correctness. So, and then you get out of that range on one side or the other and, and it's off. Yes. Right. And you, you mentioned when you flow, when you talk about flow, are you talking about what you do as, as far as your movements with your martial arts, or are you talking about uh, straight up steel mace flow? Like your typical movements I, that you see flow I, coaches doing? Um, I, I wouldn't call what I do, well, <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Um, because I have not formally learned yeah. Mace Flow. I can't call what I do exactly steel Mace Flow. I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to copy something right now anyway. I'm trying to copy some things from what I'm seeing people do on Instagram. Yeah. I see a small flow pattern and I'll try that just to see if I can do it and how I do it and how I, how I personally do it. I try to do it how they're doing it. Yeah. And then I kind of add my own thoughts and movements to it. Um, but I haven't taken any classes yet. That's and that's the best part about it that you haven't because it, you're not you're coming into it fresh and with your own perception of how you want to move. And that's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm watching your videos and I'm like, look at that. Like I'm <laughs> I'm figuring I'm trying to figure out how to copy your moves and I'm realizing <laughs> that your movements are coming out of your Tai Chi base. You, so the hip movements and, and, and there's also another thing that practitioners such as yourself do with your feet. It looks pretty cool. And I'm like, dude, I, I don't, I would never be able to quite copy what you do because I don't know Tai Chi. I know you're doing stuff <laughs> from the hips, uh, right. but I, I mean, yeah. you know, I, I'm just telling everybody to listening on the podcast. You, you just got to go to uh karina's instagram and just check out her videos and you'll see exactly what i'm talking about and, and it's fascinating and <laughs> well thanks when you uh when you move um you, you could see you're like okay this is what i do with my tai chi and now i have the mace so and you're you're just doing these cool patterns <laughs> and then w what is it that you guys are doing with your feet anyway because it's sometimes like there's like a little like foot slap a quick movement i see also too 
you'll obviously you know you're going to be moving through a pattern so you'll you'll see your foot your foot adjust prior to the movement um which is yes. steel, which is like steel mace flow you know you have to if your, you're going to get into foot, a certain your footwork is so important in your movement yeah um everything is so important in your movement you're, you're, I'll just give you a rundown you're holding say you're holding the mace you're holding it with your hands of course you have to be mindful of where your elbows are yeah. in relationship to the mace because your elbows are supporting your hands mm -hmm. you have to be mindful of your shoulders being nice and down and packed you don't want your shoulders coming up your shoulders are down because your shoulders are backing up your elbows which are backing up your hands. Go down your body. Your torso and your hips are backing up your shoulders and your elbows. Your knees and your feet are backing up your hips, torso, your shoulders, your hands. So everything all the way to the floor is backing up your hands. Yeah. That's what we call body unity or body, whole body power or body unity, how, how your whole body works synchronized together to function and that function can be a punch it could be swinging the mace it can be whatever it is that your hands are doing the power is generated basically by your feet yeah you know when you punch the power does not come from your fist power comes from your feet all the way through your body your hips of course but but your hips are between your hands and your feet yeah the middle zone of your body the the mid zone so your 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 movement, you have to be very conscious and mindful of your entire body all the time when you're moving the mace or when you're moving, however you're moving, whatever you're holding or not holding. Right. Your whole body is is involved in that. So so the, what you see when my feet are moving, my, my um, just because of my history, I'm using martial arts footwork when I'm, move, when I'm using the mace because I'm grounding myself or um, that's a whole nother subject in itself also, but the, the, my footwork has to be such that it supports the rest of my body for what my hands are doing, you know, to put it simple. Yeah, no, that's, I love that. That's such a great way to explain it. And, um, and, and yeah, you know, you said it, to put it simple, but these are the simple things that we often overlook. And so right, therefore they're not, not so simple. simple. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not, it's not simple at it, all. Yeah. It's an understanding of, of really where all this is coming from. And I mean, if you're a Mace practitioner or coach, you know, this is good stuff. Like it's coming from your feet and this is, it you is, know, it is, this is, yeah. It, and you could see it in your movement. You could, if it, it looks like you have the power of the earth in your body, <laughs> that's what it looks Thanks, like to me. That's what it looks that's like. What, that's what to me, to in our in our in the way that we teach and the way that we we, we our, our approach to martial arts and the, and it, again even within the martial arts world it's different for everybody. Yeah. But our that's the way we look at it, and um, that understanding how your entire body is functioning at every moment in time during your movement, it takes a lot of conscious effort to to develop that yeah. and. Over time it gets better and better and better and i am still working on that i'm i'm you know i consider myself a beginner even forever a white belt ever yeah. always always that's the only way you keep you keep moving forward yeah you can't ever, there's no other way you're always a beginner so you and your husband both teach uh in in the same class or do you teach separate classes how does it work um, sometimes, sometimes we teach in the same class. Uh, most of the time right now we teach separately and he doesn't do the Tai Chi. I don't, I do the Tai Chi okay. myself. Um, so I teach that class and, uh, we both teach Wing Chun. Um, usually right now it's, we're separate and we both work for a living too. We, the martial arts is not our livelihood, right. it's life. And, um, so we both have our full-time work aside from that. Um, so we teach in the evenings and, um, you know, we're trying to grow our school and to get our school going, but he does the, he does the Wing Chun. Um, okay. That's his, yeah. He's the Wing Chun guy. Yeah. Cool. All right. And if, uh, people want to come and train with you, how do they find you? How do they reach you? 
Um, right now we have, uh, you know, we're trying to do the social media stuff. Ooh, am I, uh, am I still there? Yeah, I'm here. Wait, you lost the screen went black. You hear me? Did it go? I'm here. Yeah, I hear you. A little choppy. Yeah. I don't know if my connection. Connection. Yeah. We're hardwired. Yeah, right. We still hear you. I still hear you and see you. There you oh, yeah, you're still choppy. Am I here? Yeah, I see you. You're choppy too, and I don't know if it's my I am I'm not choppy, you're choppy. You're choppy. I'm choppy. We're all choppy. <laughs> well, you're definitely <laughs> choppy. Yeah, I think my Wi Fi seems to be okay. Yeah. Yeah, if you, I mean, we're, we only have a couple minutes left, so that's good. We got, we okay. got, we got most of the, you know, the good stuff out of the way. I just wanted to see if you could get your information out so people could find you, um, and you know, tell everybody where you, um, you're located. Okay. Uh, well, we're in uh, we're in Oracle, Arizona, and um, we teach from our home right now. Um, and, uh, on social media, um, we have websites, um, our website for the Wing Chun is, uh, Southern Arizona Wing Chun at dot weebly.com. Um, uh, the Tai Chi website is, <laughs> I'm just trying to remember my own websites. I'll put it in the show notes. So what? I'll put it in the show notes too. Okay, good. So everybody <laughs> good. look at the notes. Good. But yeah, so they can contact our websites um, uh, on Facebook, on Instagram. Those are the ones that we're on right now, Facebook and Instagram. And on Instagram, you're at so, so as, meaning Southern Arizona, S O A Z. Wing Chun, uh, Southern Arizona, Tai Chi, Gung Fu. Okay. Um, or S A Wing Chun, Gung Fu. S.A. Wing Chun Kung Fu. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they'll be in the notes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll put it in notes. And um, and and also, so the woodworking you do, uh, are you, is this your own business or is are you? Yes, that's Raven Studios. Um, uh, Raven, that's Raven. Okay. Yeah. Thank that's you. Raven yeah. Studios. And I, I make uh, wooden swords and training equipment. For oh, wow. Cool. Uh, um, yeah. So is, do you have a website for Raven Studios? Yeah, little-raven.com. Little-raven.com. And they could yeah. people could go on, look at everything you make. Yes. And place an order and have it delivered. Yes, absolutely. That's what I've been doing. That's been my livelihood for the past 15 years or so. Do you have a wooden sword around you that you could hold up just so people could see? Uh, I have a Cali stick here. I don't know if ah. This is a Cali uh, flat stick. Yeah. I got any other swords uh, <laughs> uh, right around me, the ones that I make. So you made that. What's that made out of? This is, let's see this. This is a walnut handle and it's wow. an oak. Wow. Uh, it's an oak blade on here. Yeah. That's, oak is very hard. Uh, yes. Yeah. Can, I use all hardwoods. My swords are used for, um, some some people use them for sparring. Some people use them just for their forms work. Right. Um, they're designed to be very durable and uh, used in uh, contact applications. Okay. Yeah. So you could smack that against another one, and they're another not wooden. Another wooden so yeah. wooden weapon, and they should be good. And, and unless you're using it like a baseball bat, then I don't. I don't. Uh, <laughs> Or a cricket bat. That's more like a cricket bat. It's flat. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. so. I don't. I don't really watch cricket. But um, do you make like uh, long swords too with the wood? Yes. Okay. So like samurai style. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what about? I, I make uh, Japanese weapons, Chinese weapons, Filipino, and European. The European uh, Pima or uh, Arma, uh, his historical European martial arts. Um, yeah. Weapons. Wow. And what about nunchucks and things like that? I don't make those. Okay. Uh, I'm more just the swords. Um, I do make uh, some staffs and some long poles. And oh, like you that. make bow staffs? Um, some. 
Some, yeah. yeah. I don't have them. On, I don't have the bow staffs on my website. I don't. I used to. I don't have them on there anymore. Okay. Um, should people ask, like, if there's something that in particular that they're looking for, they don't see it on the website? Should they just absolutely, absolutely, yes. I do custom work also. If right. you, if somebody has a real, now I don't make fantasy type type swords, right. and and I, they're they're just for um, martial arts training. So I try to make historical swords. Yeah. But if somebody has some, uh, an, uh, a sword that I don't make or they don't see on my website, they can just contact me and, and I do custom work as well. Um, I also make I make the Wing Chun wooden dummies. Um, oh, wow. That's uh, the one where they have the, the sticks coming out and you've got to get in yes, inside yeah, the guard. There's one, if you watch my videos, there's one in the background uh, yeah. in the room that I'm training in. And, and uh, I, make, I, I do make those as well, yeah. And you could ship that to people? A, a dummy? Yeah, it's expensive to ship those. Yeah. They, they they're very heavy and huge. Yeah, um, but I ship those within the United States. Right. I I make the swords worldwide. I send, I ship those worldwide. Um, but the the wooden dummies I only ship within the United States. They're just uh, too big to deal with trying to ship overseas. Yeah. All right, yeah. that's awesome. I'm definitely gonna check that out. I want to see. I'm interested in that stuff. Uh, I do have <laughs> yeah, like a. Check it out. I have a wooden practice sword I've had for like since I told you I used to watch the Kung Fu movies. There was a, yes. a catalog that came out when we were kids. It was called Asian World of Martial Arts. And it was this big fat catalog. You could buy anything you want. And I don't know what our parents thought we were buying, but we were buying straight up knives and throwing stars. Like we were we were <laughs> maniacs. I yeah, mean, we yeah. were buying knives like like friggin' long. Wow. And, you know, like we're like yeah. in eighth grade, you know, and um, <laughs> there was a wooden sword and and I said, oh, I want that. You know, like I could, I could practice with it or whatever. Um, I still have it to this day. It looks a little bit like a samurai sword. It's all beat up. That's cool. Yeah. 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 So it's yeah, it's it's really wild. Fun. And, you know, like just it, it, it was great talking to you because uh, you reminded me so much of, of my days growing up with with, you know, <laughs> so fantasized by martial arts and everything and yeah yeah all those kung fu movies <laughs> yeah and for me you know uh the the steel maze has kind of become my m martial arts practice in my fitness world and it is they all tie together if yeah you learn how to move with a mace you're learning how to move so you yeah. can apply that to anything that you do yes indeed yes indeed. Carrying, in the, carrying the groceries in from your <laughs> from your car right exactly i mean yeah, it, 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 it applies to everything yeah it's it's Absolutely. great yeah yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, Karina, thank you very much. I appreciate this. Um, any updates you have with your website or anything, let me know. Um, you know, I'll keep uh, everybody who is a fan of the show uh, up to I, up to date. I really on things. appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it was good you talk. Having, having me, and I really appreciate what you're doing with this podcast. It's just thank awesome. you. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's it's. Um, it, family is is uh, it's just it's just awesome. I really I. I'm just I'm I'm honored to to be a little part of it, and I'm I'm really looking forward to learning more and to meeting a lot of people and learning what they do. I um, think you're going to meet a lot of people, and I think you're more than a little part of it. From what I see, your 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 unique style is 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 going to be very important as the the modality keeps growing. So, thank you well, for thank you. Really putting really your stuff out it. there. It was great. It was Thanks. great. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you very much. Ray. All right.